Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Adorkable Rachel and it's time once again for another episode of Rachel Review, so let's just hop into it. So the disaster artist is coming out. And I'm hyped! And if you don't already know what the disaster artist is, then what are you doing watching this video? I will go into the details of that film when I review it, but for today, we are gonna take a very quick exclusive look at the movie that it's based around, The Room. Quick backstory. I first heard about The Room back in 2010. I had just graduated from college, I was hanging out with some friends, and they got on the computer at one point, and they pulled up this website called thatguywiththeglasses.com. I'd never heard of this site before, but my friends got up some videos of a guy who has a persona that goes by the Nostalgia Critic. And his review of The Room, which at the time was the newest episode, was the very first thing that we watched. And for the next half hour, I do not think I had laughed that hard in a very, very, very long time. In fact, I think that half hour pretty much goes into like the top five most laughable periods of my life. I was on the floor with laughter at one point. That's how much his review made me laugh. I was just so blown away by the comedy and the reactions of this guy, but also by how bewildering the existence of this movie is. So interestingly enough, I became aware of both The Nostalgia Critic and The Room simultaneously. By the way, why do you think I do reviews of movies on the internet? It's because of The Nostalgia Critic and this review. And I don't claim to be anywhere near as talented or humorous as him, but it was his unique style of just talking about movies and nostalgic content that really inspired me to put creative energy into creating videos on the internet and sharing my opinions through them. And actually, his review of The Room was recently voted the greatest review he's ever done by fans, and well deserved because to me, it's still one of the funniest and most entertaining reviews that he has done to date. And if you want to check out his review for yourself, I'll include a link in the description below. Seriously, check it out. It is so funny. So anyway, back to The Room. Not long after discovering it, I moved to Los Angeles, and I found out that actually here in LA, they have monthly screenings of the film. It's like going to a rock Horror Picture Show screening where you rip the movie and you throw stuff in the theater. And I found out that they don't just do it here and not even just all over the country. They do this all over the world. Yeah, this movie has developed that kind of following. And during the time I've lived in Los Angeles, I think that I have been to those screenings maybe like seven or eight times. And every time that I've attended, I brought at least one person who's never seen it and it is just the greatest thing watching people react to this movie and also just react to the chaos that goes on in the theater when you're watching it. If you can find a screening near you, go to it as soon as possible. So anyway, obviously I've talked a lot about how I'm associated with this movie and it's called Status, but what is it about this movie that's given it such a strong following over the years? Well, it was originally released in 2003 and it was written, directed, produced by, and starred Tommy Wiseau. And just who is Tommy Wiseau, some of you might be asking. Um, that's actually a good question because no one seems to know. He's always been insanely secretive about his age and where he came from and how he got millions to produce this film, but what we do know is that he really wanted to act in Hollywood, so to break in, he made this movie. And calling this movie a passion project of his is kind of an understatement. So how did it turn out? Well, did I mention that a lot of people consider this one of the worst films ever made? Guys, it is so horrendously bad, if you didn't already know. And it's not just bad bad, it is also massively, hilariously bad. From the moment that Tommy Wiseau walks in with his undefinable accent, you were just there for the entire ride. Everything about this movie is just, it's like a train wreck with unicorns. It is so beautifully awful, but you can't look away. So, for those of you wondering, what exactly is the room about? The hell if I know. Okay, fine. So the plot that I think they were going for is that Tommy Wiseau plays an average guy in San Francisco. <laughs> average. And he's got everything that a guy could want. A good job, a great home, a cute fiance. What more could a guy possibly need? But as it turns out, his fiance Lisa, or his future wife as he always calls her, is cheating on him with his best friend Mark. And that's basically it. 
There's also some other characters in the movie, like Lisa's mother, who is the queen of repetitive dialogue in this movie. But bless her heart, this sweet actress is trying. There's also fan favorite Denny, who I'm pretty sure is special needs. I mean, he just likes to come into the apartment every so often and watch them have sex. Apparently. Also, Lisa's best friend and her boyfriend like to sneak into the apartment sometimes and have awkward sex. What? Yep, they don't explain it. It's just apparently a thing. Yeah, um, there's a lot of pointless sex in this movie. The room, as I'm sure you've guessed by now, is unbelievably fascinating for a lot of reasons. When I see this movie, I see a guy who really wanted to tell a story of some kind, but he didn't understand how basic story structure worked or even how scenes worked, or really how even dialogue worked for that matter. In fact, I don't think he even understands how basic human emotion works because Tommy Wiseau is by far the worst actor in this film, and probably in any film. I mean, just to give you an idea, here's a clip of one of the most famous pieces of dialogue in the film. I did not hit her, it's not true, it's bullshit, I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi Mark. What do you say to that? We'd probably be here for a couple hours if we talked about every single thing in this movie that made it memorable, but what I think it kind of comes down to is that there's so much in this movie that makes you ask the question, why? Why did you do all of this, Tommy Wiseau? For example, throughout the movie, we have characters just throwing footballs at each other for no reason. Whenever someone enters the scene, someone always has to say, Oh, hi, Danny. Oh, hi, Johnny. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hey, Johnny. Oh, hey, Johnny. Oh, hi. Oh, hi, Mike. Oh, hey, Peter. Oh, hey, Lisa. Oh, hi, Susan. Oh. So if on the internet you ever hear people say, Oh, hi, Mark. It's from this movie. Yeah, if I didn't already mention, this film also has a lot of quotable dialogue. There's also an over-the-top scene where Denny gets in trouble with a gangster over a drug issue that doesn't go anywhere. Lisa's mom casually mentions at one point that she has breast cancer and that goes nowhere. And there's also like four or five gratuitous sex scenes in this film that take forever and add nothing. Also, there's of course a lot of inconsistencies and things that just don't add up. It's like Tommy Wiseau just assumed that you wouldn't notice any of this. He thinks you're that stupid. But really, Tommy, how do you not notice? How do you not see the irrelevance of so many scenes? How do you not notice how fake the sets look? How do you go on not acknowledging that it's so pointlessly repetitive? And really, all that I just mentioned only begins to scratch the surface of what makes this film so bad, but also so memorable. But that's just it. This film isn't so bad that it's like boring and a waste of time to watch. It's so bad that it just leaves this great, hilarious impression on you. It's almost kind of genius that way. I mean, not really, but you know what I mean. And I also find it interesting that when you look into the behind the scenes of this film, apparently Tommy Wiseau didn't listen to anyone's opinions on set. People tried to steer him in the right direction, they tried to give advice and improve the film as best they could, and they tried to tell him that the dialogue is horrible and makes no sense. But Tommy Wiseau refused to listen to any of this. Halfway through production, he even replaced just about everyone on the crew because he just could not negotiate or work with anybody. He had a vision and he was not backing down. And yes, that's really terrible. You should listen to people that you work with. You should come up with compromises. But at the same time, it's actually kind of interesting seeing a movie like this that someone so badly wanted to make. And in a really strange way, there's something to also kind of be admired about that too. I mean, if you know me and you follow my social media, I preach all the time about not giving up on your goals and sticking with your vision. And isn't that kind of what Tommy did? He just really wanted to be famous and adored by millions and he believed in this movie so much. And yes, of course he could have been so much more smart about how he went about it, but you can't say that he didn't achieve all of that. And The Room may have made the opposite kind of impact that he wanted, but he still did it. It's kind of like watching George Lucas when he updated the Star Wars films, when he added scenes and effects and things that definitely were not there before. That was his vision, and he was not gonna let anyone tell him otherwise. I mean, we may think that they're stupid and pointless, but George Lucas wanted those changes. That was his passion. and. That's also why they're kind of interesting to see. But regardless of how you feel about The Room, there is just no denying that by all accounts, this is a film that should not exist. 
but by some miracle, it's left a huge impact on the world. It is one of the worst films ever made, of course, but it's also one of the best films ever made because of that. So if you like hilariously awful movies, then this is right up your alley. And if you haven't watched it yet, then I really recommend that you do. And you know what? I love this film, but even I admit, it can be insanely hard to watch this on its own. So if possible, definitely try to go to a screening. Or I also recommend the Rift Tracks commentaries of this film because those make it even more hilarious. Or if you don't want to sit through the whole thing, you can also watch the Nostalgia Critic review. I mean, you'll basically get the right idea of it. And if you're going to see The Disaster Artist, then try to see The Room first by any means possible because the disaster artist I know is just gonna make so much more sense if you see the room first. And one more thing, if you do decide to go to a screening, then be sure to bring some plastic spoons with you. Believe me, you'll thank me. So those are my thoughts on the cult classic, The Room. So now I wanna know, have you guys seen it? And if so, what do you think of it? Also let me know in the comments, what is your favorite scene from The Room? What is your favorite line? And also let me know, how did you first find out about it? Well, go ahead and leave your comments below. Be sure to like and share. And if you're new and like what you saw here, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And also be sure to hit the little bell button down there to get notified when new stuff comes out because I make new videos every week. Bye, Jerga Buddies. I'll see you soon. Hi, doggy.